On this episode of G Week, we explore the newly opened textile museum on campus, see how students face off in an apprentice style business competition, and have an exclusive interview with the Student Association president elect. All this and more on G Week. Welcome to another episode of G Week. I'm your host, Mary Grace Brown. GW is nationally known for its politically active student body. And for one night a year, Capitol Hill interns, aspiring campaign managers, and political junkies alike take the Marvin Center to put their support behind their favorite student association candidate. Andrew Carlander saw the excitement firsthand at the 2015 SA election night. I'm Andrew Carlander for G Week and GW TV, and it's a cold, rainy night outside, but that certainly did not deter voter turnout for what is the one and only Student Association election night. There's certainly a lot of excitement in this room. It's, it's absolutely buzzing. Could you tell us a little bit now, sort of maybe uh, the challenges you've experienced over the past two weeks? It's certainly, a, you know, a heavy process. Yeah, I will see sleep deprivation is obviously the one that comes to mind. Um, I would definitely say maintaining positivity is easy to um, find it hard to balance class and work and the election itself. I mean, I think that's just obviously easier when you have a great team behind you, and I did. Um, so I think just making sure you maintain positivity and keeping a level head and stay grounded um, was the hardest part. My favorite part was honestly just getting to talk to student organizations and meeting new people. I can honestly say no matter what happens, I'm walking away with a chunk of new friends. Um, they're amazing people, and I'm so thrilled to be here and to have this opportunity to even run for president. Your next SA president is Andy Dow. Signing off, I'm Andrew Carlander. Thanks, Andrew. Here with us now is the SA president-elect, Andy Dowd. So welcome, Andy. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. So you've been very involved with the SA for a few years now, but it takes a special kind of person to run for president. Why did you decide to run for this top position? Yeah, so I think I just have a really big passion for GW, and I really want to work with students and administrators to make their experience better. And the past couple of years of being in the SA have really taught me what the essay president should do and what he or she should look like and Definitely. represent the students. So I think it was just um, a passion and love for GW and bettering students' lives. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. Okay, so, um, so G Week was able to get an inside look at all the excitement and action on uh, election night. So can you just tell me what you were feeling in the moments before the names were announced and then mm -hmm. the feeling when you actually heard your name? Absolutely. Um, so when you're sitting, it's all in J Street in the Marvin Center. Um, when you're sitting there, it's you're super nerve-wracking, you're with your team, they're being very supportive, um, but those final moments before they announce is probably the most nerve-wracking thing I've ever been through. Mm -hmm. um, so you're just waiting and they start with senators and they go to EVP and then oh, they wow. announce so the you're, president. You're so the last. Oh, wow. The very last person. Um, and then once I heard my name, it was amazing, my team was hugging me, um, I got to go hug my EVP Casey and it was just an incredible experience and it finally seemed like the hard work that we had put in for the previous months um, came to culmination. Yeah, absolutely. So um, going off that, you said you hugged your, your team. So how did you form your campaign team and how have they helped you along the way during the campaigning process? Yeah, so my, my campaign team was incredible. Um, a lot of them were close friends. A lot of them were people that I didn't even know that came out and really wanted to support. And without them, I honestly couldn't have done any of it. They, they did everything. Um, they were the ones that made the profile pictures and the videos, and they worked extremely hard. Um, and having their support meant the world to me. And I can truly say I wouldn't be in this position without every single one of them. Yeah, it's definitely really like teaches you the power of teamwork and right. collaboration. So um, now for your campaign. So your campaign focused on improving health and wellness resources on campus. Can you tell me more specifically um, about these improvements and why you consider them important for GW students? Absolutely. So a couple things that I focus on a lot were um, mental health. I think there's a huge issue with a stigma of mental health on campus, so I really right. wanted to focus on that. Um, that's where I worked a lot with trying to figure out how the University Counseling Center and Student Health Services can be more confidential. Um, I also want to get resources on the back of G-World cards. Okay. That'll include UCC resources, UPD, sexual assault resources. Um, so in making my platform, I worked with a lot of student advocates and leaders from across campus because I wanted to make sure it was a very inclusive platform. I didn't want it to be selfish. Um, so I reached out to a lot of organizations and advocates to make sure that what we were advocating for was the best thing for the university, right. um, was doable, and um, would really help all students. Okay, 
Those sound like really good ideas. <laughs> that would be that would be pretty cool if the G Worlds actually got all of those resources. Um, so another big topic that we've seen in the essay is making gains towards um, combating sexual assault, which is an issue on many campuses throughout the United States. I'm just wondering how do you plan to prioritize uh, sexual assault prevention on our GW campus? Absolutely. So I think something that's really beneficial to the GW community is that we have an organization, um, Students Against Sexual Assault, that is striving towards making this a known issue, but also teaching how to prevent the issue and su support survivors. And I think it's really important that we collaborate with them to make sure that we are, you know, doing the best that we can do to take strides, especially on our campus. Um, we have we have done amazing things this year. We participated in the It's On Us campaign, um, and we have a new Title IX coordinator, and it's all really great, but I think it's important that we continue to take these strides. Um, right. Getting resources on the back of G Worlds is one idea, um, and there's a lot of great ideas that they have, and I think by collaborating with SASA and with the SA, we'll get a lot, of, a, lo a lot achieved this year. Awesome, and then just finally, how will you bring a fresh perspective as the new face of the Student Association? Yeah, so I think, um, something that I guess makes me a little unique. I've been in the essay for a couple of years, but I think it's really important that an essay president is involved in other things and you know has a different variety of friend groups. Um, I've had the privilege to serve as an RA, I play a club sport, um, right. so I think it's really great to you know, reach out to other organizations and I think as essay president one of the most important things you can do is meet with students and Definitely. hear their thoughts and take them and actually do something about them. Um, so I think that's really the fresh perspective I'll bring to the Student Association. Awesome. So you're like approachable. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, thank you so much. I'm, I'm so you. excited to see what you do as president, <laughs> and congratulations. Thank you. I'm very excited. Stay tuned for the headlines that are making a buzz right here on campus, next. The George Washington University, at the intersection of policy, practice, and research, connecting all that Washington has to offer with an intellectual environment that drives progress, transforming vision into action, offering learning experiences that are rigorous, real-time, and real-world. In a city shaping the future, George Washington is a place where faculty and students don't just study the world, they work to change it. Records aren't broken on game days. They get broken at 6 a.m., late at night, while the rest of the world sleeps. Records are broken, one shot at a time. Order your tickets today. Welcome back. GW classrooms are the place for innovation and creativity, but with the lack of funding, some departments can't support programs that are meaningful to students. GW recently announced that they would slash funding for their music department. The budget cuts would both shrink the number of on-campus musical ensembles and significantly reduce the hours of adjunct professors. Most music classes will now be restricted to only music majors and minors. In response, students and alumni are banding together to keep the arts relevant at GW. Meanwhile, an advanced advertising class in the business school challenges students to be clever and innovative Modeled after the show, The Apprentice, this six-credit class provides students with the opportunity to work as a team to present their very own ad campaign and take on other teams in an upcoming competition in New York. Here's Alana Crennan with more. Who would have ever thought that Donald Trump would offer a course at GW? I feel like everybody in The Apprentice, they all like, want to kill each other to win, so that's what we're doing. Well, not exactly. Students in the advanced advertising class in the business school learn the ins and outs of marketing and advertising. At the end of the course, they compete in a high-stakes competition against other collegiate schools in New York. It gives you like a realistic interpretation of what, it, what it's like to work in an advertising agency. It's one thing to be working in a classroom, and then it's one thing to be actually put in there in the experience, and especially that like we're being judged by people who are very, fairly prominent in the advertising industry. Students worked from scratch all semester to create an exciting, detailed, and interactive presentation. Five students, chosen by their peers, will present in front of a panel of judges at their district competition on April 19th. Millions of hours of prep. Millions of hours. You spend your life on it, and it becomes, whether you like it or not, your child. Their professor, Dr. Linda Maddox, who has been teaching the course for over 25 years, 
explains the realistic aspects of the competition and how it can impact students' futures. In New York, it comes together, and they get on that stage, and the audience is mesmerized by them. It's the most addictive feeling you can have. And I always say that even if we don't win at nationals, if you win or even can compete in District 2 and get to stand up there in front of these top-level advertising people from New York, you're a winner. And if they love you, they hire you. They have the power to hire you almost on the spot, and that's happened in the past. This year, the class is making a campaign for Pizza Hut. They were given two parameters and an unlimited budget. Pizza Hut wants to create a better digital uh, ordering experience, and so that was one of their tasks. Secondly, they wanted them to get 75% of the orders for pizza online, digitally, and especially on mobile devices within a six-month period. The class emphasizes teamwork and dedication and isn't limited to business majors. Uh, we've spent basically 24-7 together for the past four months, so I think it has really helped uh, with the content and with our quality of work because we know each other so well and we're able to support each other in a way that I really have never seen on any other project that I've been able to do. And I'm actually the only non-business student in the course this year. Um, in the past, they've had other SMPA students. If they make it past regionals in New York, the class goes on to nationals. The team has won regionals numerous times and nationals one time in 1998. I remember they asked me how I felt after winning, and I said, other than my wedding, this was the most exciting day of my life. <laughs> Even though the stress of the all-nighters will eventually come to an end, these students have created a bond that will last forever. We become a real family. Uh, students feel free to call me at home anytime. Like last night when before they were doing their presentation, I said, okay, I'm going to take the phone to bed with me. And if you need me, you call me and wake me up. And that's the kind of relationship that we have in the class. Reporting for G-Week, I'm Alana Kremen. Thanks, Alana. We wish the best to the advanced advertising class in their competition. We'll be right back with more headlines after the break. For the fine athletic tradition, Patricio Garino throws it down with two hands. Wonderful city. It's just a great place to go to school. Keith and Sandwich open down the right side. We'll go and dunk it with his right hand. Not just the family, it's the whole community. Arnold Duncan with 1.9 seconds left. Arnold, a thunder slam. 81-80, George Washington. A huge victory for the Colonials. Welcome back. Get your cameras ready, GW. The National Park Service is predicting that the cherry blossom trees will be in full bloom by the weekend of April 11th. The 2015 National Cherry Blossom Festival, welcoming springtime and warm weather to D.C., is expected to attract 1.5 million visitors this month. If you find yourself hungry after the cherry blossom parade on April 11th, be sure to make your way over to Beefsteak, Jose Andres' newest fast casual restaurant. Visitors can choose from a variety of fresh and organic vegetable selections to customize their high-protein bowl. The Foggy Bottom location at 22nd and I Street is currently the only one in the world, but Chef Andres has already planned another opening in DuPont Circle this summer. Another new addition on campus is the highly anticipated textile museum. The eight-year project was finally unveiled to the public this past month, and spectators can expect to see an exclusive collection of textiles and clothing. Holly Goldberg takes us inside the new museum. The George Washington University Textile Museum opened March 21st, marking a final step of a nearly three-year integration process that brought the 90-year-old Textile Museum and Washingtonia collection to GW's campus. The new museum complex contains the renovated Woolhull House, showcasing the Albert H. Small Washingtonia Collection and Center for National Capital Area Studies, the newly built Textile Museum, Museum Shop, and the 20,000-volume Arthur D. Jenkins Library, which is the world's oldest library devoted exclusively to the textile arts. The museum is now the largest university museum in Washington, D.C., costing $33 million to build, and contains more than 19,000 non-Western textiles and carpets. The collection spanned five continents and five millennia, with works from 2,000 years ago. Three collections are currently on display. Unraveling Identity, Our Textiles, Our Stories, Seat of Empire, Planning Washington, and the Civil War in Making of Modern Washington. Both the community outreach side, the student engagement, 
Uh, those together are really exciting dimensions of this, but of course what it's really all about is seeing these spectacular artifacts finally mounted on our museum walls. We've had dozens of students that have been involved in actually hands-on work and putting together these exhibitions. Enter a portal through which they will explore the heights and depths of human creativity and the rich variety of human cultures. The museum houses the world's premier collection of carpets from Islamic cultures, with rugs from Spain, Egypt, Turkey, and Iran. The oldest piece of the collection dates back from some time between 2,500 to 3,000 B.C., from what is now Peru. And the museum also houses a letter written by George Washington himself to Congress in 1790. There will be weekly drop-in lectures and activities. We've got, for instance, every Wednesday a drop-in program at noon on cultural topics by students or faculty members, and they're meant to be 20-minute presentations. The GW Textile Museum is open Monday, Wednesday through Friday, 11.30 to 6.30, Saturday 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Sunday 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Admission is free for museum members, children, and current GW students and faculty. A suggested donation of $8 for non-members will support exhibitions, collections, and educational programs. Thanks, Holly. GW students recently celebrated Spring Fling in New Yard. Before electronic artist Blau and rapper Theophilus London hit the stage, students enjoyed games, free food, giveaways, and even a mechanical shark ride. The musical events were announced only three days prior to the event on Facebook. Despite students admitting they weren't familiar with London, they grew to like his tunes. He's not bad. He's better than I expected. Colonials also supported their very own Joe Ramone of Perplex the Crew, a student rapper who opened for Blau. The excitement surrounding the event marked another only at GW moment for students. Coming to Spring Fling makes me realize I'm so happy being at GW. Well, that brings us to the end of our final show for the current school year. Until next time, make sure to check out GWTV on our website at www.gw-tv.com. Thanks for tuning in, GW. We'll be seeing you next fall.